Hello everybody, this is Dr. Abdul Qadir Ashur. Today we are going to continue our series of videos about neuropharmacology, specifically the third part of the introduction to neuropharmacology, where we will talk about the autonomic nervous system. Specifically, we'll talk about the autonomic nervous system and nervation, transmitter features of autonomic and somatic motor uh, nerves, then understand the basic anatomy organization of sympathetic and parasympathetic nervous system and differences between them. Okay, so autonomic nervous system, autonomic, autonomic means involuntary, means there is an autonomy, okay, it goes without your intervention, okay, you don't intervene, you don't like to intervene even, okay, it's for you that you don't intervene, it's just autonomous. So, autonomic nervous system, also called the visceral or vegetative or involuntary nervous system. So, these are the most common uh, two names, autonomic or involuntary. It's involuntary and is distributed uh, widely throughout the body. It regulates autonomic functions that occur without conscious control. Okay? It's involuntary. The efferent nerves of the autonomic nervous system supply all innervated structures of the body except skeletal muscle, which is served by somatic neuron, as we explained in our last lecture. Uh, in the periphery, autonomic nervous system uh, consists of nerves, ganglia, and plexuses that innervate heart, blood vessels, uh, uh, glands, uh, and other uh, visceral organs, in addition to smooth muscles, smooth muscles in various tissues, such as the small intestine, urinary bladder, and so many other tissues. Uh, most organs receive both sympathetic and parasympathetic innervation, okay? So, uh, usually sympathetic innervation or the function or the action of the sympathetic nervous system oppose that of the parasympathetic nervous system. For example, Parasympathetic nervous system uh, uh, reduces the heart rate, wherever sympathetic nervous system increases the heart rate, okay? Uh, despite the dual innervation, usually one system predominates over the other. We'll talk about this later, but just as a, a one common example in the heart, okay, the vagus nerve is the predominant uh, factor for controlling the heart rate, okay? The vagus nerve is the cranial nerve number 10, of the parasympathetic nervous system is the predominant specifically during the rest and digest or during the state of rest, generally speaking. Uh, most tissues, as we said, you uh, receive dual innervation from both system, parasympathetic and sympathetic. However, uh, most blood vessels, the sweat gland, dilator, pupillary muscle, and hair follicles receive only sympathetic innervation. Uh, whereas uh, ciliary and sphincter, uh, sphincter pupillary muscle, okay, or constrictor pupillary muscle, and uh, uh, gastric and pancreatic glands receive only parasympathetic innervation. Yeah, this is a very important caveat. We say sympathetic, we say parasympathetic here. When we mention this, we, we mean anatomically. Okay, this is thoracolumbar, so it is sympathetic. It is craniosacral, so it is parasympathetic. I don't care about the function. I don't care about the transmitter. I don't care about, about whether it's excitatory or inhibitory. The main criteria is the innervation. Please keep this in mind because this causes uh, confusion to many students. Okay, so this is the dual innervation, just as you see here. See here the eye is receiving dual innervation from the parasympathetic nervous system in red and sympathetic nervous system in blue, okay? You see here the, you know, uh, the, the salivary gland, uh, olfactory glands, okay? Uh, uh, the heart, the lung, okay? Uh, 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 stomach, the GIT, generally speaking, okay? So all of these are receiving dual innervation from the sympathetic and parasympathetic. As we said, parasympathetic is craniosacral, cranio, uh, means cranial nerve 3, 7, 9, and 10, and sacral, the middle three sacral segments. And uh, 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 sympathetic nervous system uh, is thoraco, all thoracic, and upper three lumbar, thoraco lumbar. This is sympathetic, parasympathetic, okay? 
Okay, so parasympathetic nervous system. This system maintains homeostasis within the body. It's required for life, essential for life, okay? It maintains essential body functions such as digestion and elimination of waste products, okay? It usually acts to oppose or balance the action of the sympathetic division and generally, as we said, the heart, okay, the sympathetic nervous system increases heart rate, parasympathetic nervous system decreases heart rate, okay, this one example. And usually predominates in the predominates the sympathetic nervous system in the status of rest and digest. Very important key you have to remember. Okay, during rest and digest situations, the predominant system, generally speaking, is parasympathetic nervous system. Okay, you are in a state of arrest. Okay, you don't like to accelerate your heart rate. You don't like to accelerate your breathing rate. You don't like to uh, 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 have midriasis. Uh, and all of these bronchodilatation, you don't need this. If you are just in state of rest, okay? And also you need to start digestion of your food, okay? You increase the secretory the functions of the gut and the motility and all of these things. So rest and digest, very important key. Okay, uh, yeah, this is very important. The parasympathetic nervous system never discharge as a complete system. It will be a disaster, okay? It will result in massive and desirable unpleasant symptoms, specifically urination and defecation. Just to give you an example, okay? So now, uh, uh, you turn on the light and the light reflects, okay, you have the meiosis, okay? Just you need only to restrict your pupil. Do you need to, you know, also activate the urination and defecation and all and reduce heart rate and, 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 and bronchoconstriction and so many? No, you don't need that. Just need one function, okay? You need to increase the secretion of the gut, okay? You do that separately, okay, or individually. Uh, in the vases, we go the, the gut, uh, heart, uh, or eye are activated separately, okay? So they are affected individually only, okay? As I explained, it's gonna be a disaster if you activate everything at one time. And the neurotransmitters, the neurotransmitters in the parasympathetic nervous system all the way is acetylcholine. From the preganglionic to the postganglionic, acetylcholine, okay? So the chemical transmitter and the ganglionic synapses between the pre- and postganglionic neurons. We talked last time about the uh, transmission, if you remember. You remember action potential, action potential, until the end of the preganglionic neuron, then there will be a release of chemical transmitter all the way. It's acetylcholine. No confusion. Acetylcholine, okay? Whether it is sympathetic or parasympathetic. In the preganglionic neuron, releases acetylcholine and works on a nicotinic receptor on the postganglionic neuron. Okay, uh, it is the mediator uh, synapses of the postganglionic parasympathetic neuron. So it is the chemical transmitter in the ganglia, okay, between the pre and postganglionic neuron, and between the postganglionic neuron and the neuroeffector organ or the effector organ. Acetylcholine also, this is kind of an exception to the rule, okay? So it kind of is a sympathetic. It's coming the nervous thoracolumbar, okay? But it's exception to the rule, okay? Even though it's, it's sympathetic, it releases acetylcholine, okay? So this is kind of exception to the rule. Acetylcholine, uh, they call it, by the way, sympathetic cholinergic, because the nerve is sympathetic, but it releases acetylcholine. Acetylcholine is secreted mainly at the nerve ending of the parasympathetic, Okay, nerve fibers, okay, so this is the, the site of the production of acetylcholine, we'll talk about this later, okay, and these parasympathetic nerve fibers are called cholinergic, because they act by releasing acetylcholine, okay. Then the sympathetic nervous system, okay, sympathetic, you know, remember, it's come from sympathy, okay, there is emotion here, there is a stress, okay, this system uh, regulates expenditure of uh, energy and operative when the organism is confronted with a stressful situation, when you are under stress, okay, danger or intense emotion, a death of a relative or beloved person, uh, whatever, okay, any intense emotion, okay, and it's referred to as fight or flight. Very important key for the sympathetic nervous system. There in the parasympathetic nervous system, we said rest and digest. Here, it's, uh, we say it prepares the body for stressful situation. So it is fight or flight, okay? I will explain this later when we talk separately about sympathetic nervous system. It also promotes adjustments during exercise. If you are climbing stairs, 
if you are playing uh, football, futsal, volleyball, whatever, if you are doing exercise, okay, you are using your muscle, you, there, there will be muscle contraction. This muscle needs blood supply, right? So look here, the miracle from our beloved God, okay, look here at the distribution of the blood. Blood flow to the skin and the intestine, intestine, intestine will be reduced, okay? But blood flow to the muscle, because I need it more, will be increased, okay? How? We'll explain this separately in uh, uh, next lecture uh, when we talk about sympathetic nervous system separately and in details. It prepares the body for emergency, emergency situations, so the heart rate increases, okay? Okay, heart rate increase, can heart rate increase without increasing the breathing rate? It cannot be happen, and also the uh, breathing, the, 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 there is a bronchodilatation, so the breathing is deep, okay? All of these are, you know, has, has to work with each other, okay? Not separately, it cannot work separately. So that's why this system tends, tends to function as a unit. Remember there, it works separately, individually, right? Here, this one needs to function as a unit, okay? And often discharged as a complete system during severe exercise or even reaction to fear, okay? Although it's not essential for uh, survival, it's nevertheless an important system that prepares the body to handle and in uncertain situations or unexpected stimuli. Okay, neurotransmitters, okay, the neurohormones or neurotransmitters of the sympathetic nervous system are adrenaline, also called epinephrine, or noradrenaline, also called norepinephrine. In addition to acetylcholine, please remember this part, okay, is universal. Acetylcholine serves as the chemical transmitter at gangrene, synapse, pilbri, and post neurone in both sympathetic and parasympathetic. So between pregangrenic and postgangrenic, pregangrenic will release acetylcholine, which will work on nicotinic receptors on the postgangrenic neuron. All the way, sympathetic and parasympathetic. Okay? Noradrenaline here, when I talk about postgangrenic, sympathetic, Neurons, yes, norepinephrine or noradrenaline is the neurotransmitter at these synapses between the postgangrenic neuron and the effector organ. Okay, adrenaline is secreted by the adrenal medulla. Easy, adrenaline, adrenal medulla. Okay, about 80% of the secretion of the adrenal medulla is adrenaline, 20% is noradrenaline or norepinephrine. Uh, norepinephrine is mainly secreted at the nerve endings of the sympathetic nerve fibers, also called adrenergic nerve fibers. Okay. So here, uh, the neurotransmitter features of autonomic and somatic uh, motor nerves. Let's take it, okay? This is a very important diagram, okay? So I will give you here a good, wonderful piece of information that's very good generalization that you need in your exams and to remember these things, okay? Look here. I I'm not going to say anything. Just look, look. Okay, did you notice any general feature here? I'll give you a second. Okay, for the sake of time, I'm gonna say, okay, so any neuron that comes directly from the central nervous system, okay, it releases acetylcholine and it works on nicotinic receptor. Acetylcholine, 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 nicotinic receptor. Of course, later on we'll, uh, uh, we'll define NN and NM, but not now. So all of these uh, are uh, the pre-ganglionic neurons. All the way release acetylcholine and the receptor is nicotinic uh, uh, receptors. When I talk about the, post, the postganglionic neuron, you say, okay, Dr. Regue, what, what you are talking about? Are you talking about sympathetic nervous system? If it's sympathetic, the, uh, the, the, the neurotransmitter uh, between the, the postganglionic and the effector organ is not epinephrine, okay? Or uh, in the uh, renal vascular uh, uh, smooth muscle, it could be not epinephrine or dopamine. Uh, the uh, parasympathetic nervous system, I, as we said, acetylcholine all the way, but acetylcholine and the receptors muscarinic on the postganglionic uh, 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 neuron. Or postganglionic, I'm sorry, on the postganglionic neuron will release acetylcholine and muscarinic receptors will be on the surface of the effector organ. 
Okay, as I said before, so, uh, sweat gland is kind of an exception to the rule. So the, uh, the, the nerve is sympathetic, but it releases acetylcholine. And I mean, the postcholinic neuron releases acetylcholine and the receptor is muscarinic. So this is kind of exception to the parasympathetic or the sympathetic, I'm sorry, usually sympathetic releases norepinephrine and the receptor is alpha or beta. But this one is sympathetic, but it releases acetylcholine and the receptor is muscarine. I hope this clear. This is very important diagram. Okay, so now pharmacology finally, okay, we finished with the uh, uh, introduction of the anatomy, physiology, okay, so now pharmacology. Drugs that uh, drug may mimic or block. Mimic means resemble or block the effects of the two primary neurotransmitters, acetylcholine and norepinephrine or epinephrine, also called noradrenaline, adrenaline. Okay? If they, if they resemble, they mimic the neurotransmitter, they are called receptor agonists. These drugs activate the receptor. So agonists activate. Agonists activate. Okay? Drugs that block the neurotransmitter, whether they block acetylcholine or norepinephrine, epinephrine, they are say, referred to as receptor antagonist. Okay, these drugs block. Okay, block, block. Okay, here it's uh, agonist activate. Okay, here it's antagonist. The antagonist block the endogenous neurotransmitter from activating the receptor. Okay, uh, for parasympathetic nervous system drugs, drugs may resemble or mimic acetylcholine. They are called uh, cholinergic. Muscarinic agonists or parasympathomimetics, uh, parasympathomimetic drugs or parasympathomimetics, all of these are just synonyms, same, okay? Or block acetylcholine, they are called anticholinergic, muscarinic antagonist or parasympatholytic. All of these are same. Uh, for the sympathetic nervous system, drugs may mimic norepinephrine and are called adrenergic, adrenergic agonists, sympathomimetic, all of these are the same. Or block norepinephrine and thus are called anti adrenergic, adrenergic antagonist or sympathomimetic. Okay, that's it for today. Thank you for your attention and see you soon in our uh, first lecture on the parasympathetic nervous system. Until then, okay, I wish you the best of luck and see you soon. Bye.